What's poppin' guys? Welcome back to our fifth installment of Fearful Flip to Fearless. Say that five times fast. Um, if you don't know by now, we're talking about essentially people who were fearful, and then when God came into the picture, they were flipped to fearless. See how that title works? So you've heard about the women that Jesus first appeared to. You've heard about the disciples that were all locked up and scared until Jesus came in. You've heard about Peter, you've heard about Thomas. Um, that were all just locked in sadness, in fear, until Jesus came to the picture, and then they were flipped from fearful to fearless. Now, I can tell you that that's the case with my own life. Like, I've mentioned this before at Wild Side and on weekends, guys, like I lived in fear constantly of what other people thought of me, so I did everything I thought I had to do to make them think that I was cool. You know, I did a lot of dumb stuff, and it was just this constant pressure of fear of rejection of others and just cowardness on my part, okay? But then in college, I had this come to God moment for lack of a better terms where I realized I can't do it myself. And guys, I can tell you that since that day, things have been just on a come up. I'm not saying it's been perfect. It's not been a light switch where I was off and now I'm on fire, I'm perfect for God. No, not at all. It's a constant battle, but I can feel day by day that I continue to seek him, that that fearfulness is being removed from me bit by bit and he's transforming me making me fearless and confident and courageous in his name but that's just me um i know you guys probably don't want to hear about me and my name's definitely not in the bible well it is but not like me it's a different jacob um but yeah so today we're talking about a guy named saul and to give you a full context of saul we're gonna go back to roughly chapter seven of acts um this is right around the time when jesus has died come back and then gone into heaven okay so all the disciples are out preaching his word making disciples of all nations you know bringing thousands of people to christ okay and there's some people who are being overlooked because the disciples are also handing out food kind of like a food pantry type thing and some people are feeling like they're being forgotten about so the disciples are like all right we need help so they call seven guys be like all right guys you take control of the food pantry stuff we will do the preaching and the praying and whatnot okay so among those sevens is a guy named stephen the Bible says is full of faith in the Holy Spirit, this super godly guy, okay? So long story short, long, bleh, long story short, not shirt, Stephen gets arrested, kind of the same story as Jesus. He gets arrested for blasphemy, they bring all these charges against him, and essentially they stone him, okay? So Stephen is in the court and they're stoning him, and we look in Acts chapter 7. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep, and Saul was there giving approval to his death. So that's the first picture we see of Saul, approving this Christian man's death. He's happy that this dude is dying. Not a great first impression, if you ask me, huh? I don't think so. So we jump forward, chapter 9. Meanwhile, while Saul was still breathing out murderous threats, against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found anyone there who belonged to the way, who were Christians, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. That is Saul's whole job. His life, his career, is killing, persecuting, and imprisoning Christians. That is what he does. That is what he's known for, right? This dude is not the, the best guy in our eyes, in God's eyes, right? Like, if society looked at this guy, he's a murderer. He's chasing down people who proclaim Jesus' name and killing them, imprisoning them. <laughs> Again, not the best first impression of this dude. But check this out. This is awesome. Um, as he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. Which, who are you, Lord? Saul asked. Sounds like he already knew who he was. Anyways, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up, go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. Two things I want to hit real quick. One, God uses broken, messed up people, right? That's super encouraging because I feel like I mess up a lot. I sin and I feel like God can't use me because I'm not good enough. I'm not this, that, or the other. But God uses exactly these people, right? He's using Saul, the dude that kills Christians, that persecutes Christians. He's using him. And it goes on to later to say that Jesus tells this guy Ananias that Saul is the man that is his chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and their kings, before the people of Israel. Saul is chosen by God in the midst of his brokenness. 
which is beautiful for people like me and you who are broken and are sinners, that God can use us all the same no matter what we've done or what we can do, okay? And secondly, when he comes to Saul, he says, now get up, go into the city, and you'll be told what you must do. Here's what he doesn't do. He doesn't shame, he doesn't guilt, he doesn't throw lightning bolts down at Saul, doesn't rub in his face, call him an idiot. He doesn't do any of that. He says, I am Jesus, now get up and go do this, right? When Jesus comes into our life, guys, he doesn't shame us, he doesn't guilt us, which is this picture of what we might have sometimes, right? Like God throwing lightning bolts, sending us to hell. That's not the case. God hates sin, absolutely. But God also has this love, this undying passion and grace and forgiveness for us, okay? And so when he comes into Saul's life, like I said, he doesn't shame him, he doesn't guilt him, he shows his power, flash of light, boom, I am Jesus, now get up, stop crying, and go do what you must do. I will tell you what that is. He sends us forward to go do his work, and that's awesome. And you guys are going to see how God's presence transforms Saul from fearful, which he was hateful, which is bred from fear, fearful, and how he was flipped to fearless, which we'll talk about next week. Peace. Thank you, guys.